Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and today I've got a cool project, one to do with this lighthouse. The Spring Point Ledge Lighthouse is located in Maine, and it's located there to protect ships with its constant beam. It's still working, but it was built in 1897. That is roughly the year that this candy cooling table was made that we're pouring the sugar on right now. So the first thing I do is I select my colors and I start coloring the hot sugar. The sugar is ridiculously hot and has no water in it, but the food coloring does. And it boils as I stir and it boils off the water so the candy doesn't become sticky. So we get this email from a customer looking for custom candy with a lighthouse in it. You see, it seems that he proposed to his fiance in front of a lighthouse and he wanted to have candy to commemorate the event for, I assume, the wedding. I actually don't know what they did with the candy since I never actually spoke to the customer personally, but I thought we could do better. I think he was envisioning just a red and white pole, a classic stereotype children's book lighthouse. And I thought I could actually do something that was very similar to the real lighthouse. Now, similar, but not exact. This isn't like painting. This isn't like doing a design on a computer or using Photoshop. This is more like impressionistic art. And I've got to give an impression of the lighthouse and the candy's going to distort during the cooking. So I want something that's going to be reminiscent of this design by the end of the process. As a candy maker, the scary bit is I only get one try typically. I'm now going to separate the candy into its different colors and let it cool. Different colors have to be at different temperatures. Since I'm going to pull the white, I want it to be a little hotter because the candy cools a lot during the pulling process. The candy is still hotter than boiling water, and I need to fold it over again and again on this candy hook. And I've got to do this because I need to trap air bubbles into the sugar. I do this because those little air bubbles reflect light, and the light that it reflects makes the candy brilliant and white. And we need this because we're going to play some tricks with this. We're going to have a clear background for the sky and an opaque background for everything else. So when it's done, it's going to look very interesting, more like a piece of stained glass than most of my candies. This candy is also interesting for another reason. We almost never make grape candy and I think I need to change that, but the flavor of this is traditional grape, like the grape of a grape knee high. And it's an interesting flavor and there's going to be another video coming up soon about the history of this flavor itself, as it's a very American flavor. So let's look at the lighthouse again. Here it is in the corner, sort of how I envision it in the candy, but this would be photographic. If we simplify it, this is what we get. It just seems to be some boxes, but when we add the color and the texture, this is going to give a good impression of this very lighthouse. And now to actually construct the lighthouse. But, I'm sorry about this, I missed a little bit, I forgot to press record. I've already made the railings for the lighthouse. I made one set of railings, cut them, and then stretched it to be a little thinner. No reason to do the work twice. And then I build the white block with the little windows in it that goes between the railings. I know sometimes the artwork in my video is hard to follow how I put it together. So it's been about four weeks since I made this candy and I can't follow the video either. So at this point, I'm gonna sort of take a step back and jump over until we hit the point where I can go back and tell you what I'm doing and talk to you about our new Patreon account. People have been asking me for a while to start a Patreon account and I've been trying to figure out what I can do to make it really interesting and worthwhile to join. And I think I've got it. I'm going to start using this Patreon account as a format for a podcast, for a follow-up commentary on some of our videos, behind the scenes, quick clips, uh, reject footage. People have wanted to see our video from beginning to end, and even in real time, we can do this here. Every time I do a video that's too long, or I do a video that's about something like my questions and answers, a lot of people don't like it. So I figured the hardcore fans are going to want this, and the hardcore fans will find it on Patreon. We're going to start a second data channel. Now, the podcast is going to be, when I do it, about following up on videos, following up on 
background of lofty pursuits, following up on what we're doing to do maybe candy restoration. There may be videos, there may be stills. The podcast has a chance of eventually going public. I've been thinking about doing a public podcast, and I think this is a good place to start it. But we'll see where it all goes. The one thing to remember is the videos are definitively G. This this channel is, well, it's still probably going to be G, but we're going to deal with a lot of history, and not all history is nice. This is probably not going to be appropriate for smaller children, so if you're viewers out there who have them, you may want to listen first and decide what's appropriate. And nothing is going to be dirty, just things are going to be real. So, if you're interested, the information for getting there is in our description below this video, and I'm hoping to have the uh, first of these up, well, before this video goes up. I hope I get it. You'll get to see it if it's there or not. Thank you very much for all your support. And of course, you can go to www.pd.net if you want to chase dark candies. This, once again, was a custom batch. You're not going to find it on there. What I've been doing here is I've been combining white and black and creating black and white stripes to create a semblance for the rocky shore. I'm going to do something similar for the sky. And now for the final assembly where I add the clear sky and the stony bottom and hopefully everything lines up. And hopefully I've got enough information so that when you see the image, you'll recognize it as Spring Point Ledge Lighthouse. Now I've loaded the log of candy, and this log weighs 25 pounds, it's a lot of candy, onto our batch roller. This machine was made somewhere between 1890 and 1910. It's cast iron, it weighs a ton, and it keeps the candy spinning, and it keeps it heated as well. This keeps the candy from cooling off too fast for us. So what we're going to do here is we're going to size it down from a giant log to a tiny rod. And then we're going to cut the rods up into bite-sized pieces. And this is a little tricky. It's all touch work. Because if we do it wrong, the image is terribly distorted. And frankly, this image is complicated enough, it's probably distorted without any help from me. We send our congratulations out to our customer and his bride-to-be. And we leave you with this one simple thought. And here's the final lighthouse candy, complete with sky that glows when it's backlit. I wish we could do every custom job we're asked to do, but we sort of cherry-pick them because there's not enough hours in the day. But if you ever want to, you can contact us from Custom Candy, and if you're ever driving down I-10 by Tallahassee, we're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10, please come and visit. We're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We make candy a lot, but not all the time, so hopefully you'll be lucky enough and you'll get to see us make some candy. And of course, if you can't come, you can always get our candy on our website, www.pd.net. If you can take a moment and ring that bell and like us here and subscribe to us here on YouTube, you can also like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and now Patreon. We look forward to seeing you in our next video, and thank you again for watching.